Welcome back to More Sip the Tally. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today on the More Sip the Tally Countdown, we're going to talk about our number 25 team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we're going to get into it. They're coming off a playoff run last year that many people didn't think they would go on. And actually, they finished at 8-9, barely over 500. They won a playoff game that, like I said, a, a lot of people didn't think they would win. And uh, Baker Mayfield kind of outplayed what many people thought he would do. They, like I said, they were 8-9. They won the NFC South. And um, they were 9-8. and eight. My fault. I apologize. I said 8-9 and nine twice. They were 9-8 and eight and won the NFC South. This year, they're, you know, going to try to run it back. Lost their OC, Dave Pinales, to the um, Carolina Panthers. And let's see what they got coming back uh, this year. So let's start off with their quarterback room. They have Baker Mayfield, 17 games, uh, 4,044 yards, 28 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Uh, Backing him up, Kyle Trask, only played in two games, had one throw. And then John Wolfolk, who came in from the Rams, who had no stats in 2023. They have that quarterback room ranked number 20. They have the 20th ranked quarterback room. Going back to their wide receiver, I'm sorry, their running back room. I have their running back room ranked 28th. Now, in their running back room, they have Rashad Wright. Rashad White, I'm sorry. Played 17 games, uh, had 990 yards, 3.6 yards per catch. I'm sorry, yards per carry. Uh, 64 receptions and three touchdowns. Uh, just under 1,000 yards for Rashad Wright. They, White, I don't know why I keep wanting to say it right. Rashad White. They drafted Bucky Irvin, the rookie from Oregon. They also had Chase Edmonds in that room, who's kind of on the downside of his career, but also a valuable backup. But Bucky Irvin and Rashad White, yeah, I said it right. <laughs> Rashad White should be a uh, formidable uh, running back tandem. But I got them 28 because of the newness of coming with the new OC. And, you know, the left side of that, well, the right side of that O-line, not the left side, the right side of that O-line. I just don't, not sure what kind of production they're going to get out of the running back room to even get. And they may get 1,000 yards out of both of them combined, Bucky and White. But just that, that combination on, on Evans, I got them 28. And it's, it's just, it's past production plus, plus what I think the future going to be for, for that room. All right. Let's go on to wide receiver room. I have their wide receiver room ranked 13th. They return in Mike Evans, played 17 games, had 1,255 yards. Again, another year of 1,000 yard receiving yards. Now, let me see how many uh, in a row that is for him. Let me, let me get that number for you guys. Because he got a bunch in a row. Let me find it. Mike Evans, here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten yard, ten years in a row of a thousand yards receiving, which is crazy, which is crazy. Uh, Thirteen touchdowns. He was an all second team All Pro and he made the Pro Bowl again. Also, Chris Godwin's in that room. He had a thousand yards. Also, uh, two touchdowns. Trey Palmer's in that room. Also, had uh, 389, 85 yards and thirty nine catches, three touchdowns. They drafted Jalen McMillan who's a rookie from the University of Washington, who should help. A uh, second-year guy, Rakeem Jarrett. And they also got the veteran Sterling Shepard from the New York Giants. Again, that wide receiver room I have ranked number 13. Their tight end room I have ranked 28. Kate Iden, who had 42 catches, 391 yards, 9.3 yards per catch. Uh, Cole Cliff, well, one catch, two yards. And then Payne Durham runs out that tight end room. And I have their tight end room ranked number 28. Let's go to the O-line. And at one point, their O-line was the strength. When they won the Super Bowl, their O-line was beefed up and tough. They, they have lost a lot of dudes in their O-line. But they still have re one really good guy in that um, group, and that's Tristan Wirfs. He was their highest graded O-lineman. He graded out at 83.5. He's their left tackle. Uh, they got Ben Bredesen, who, again, another guy that I'm familiar with, was drafted by the Ravens. Played with the Giants last year. He's probably going to be their starting left guard. Uh, Graham Barton, the rookie from Duke, who's probably going to be their center. Uh, they got Cody Monch and uh, Luke. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name. You'll see it on the screen. It's G-O-E-D-E-K-E. -E -E. 
has their right their right tackle, and that's why I had their O line kind of I mean not their O line their running back room kind of down because I don't know how good that right side of the line is going to be. Because you're probably going to start a rookie at center, then those two guys on the right side. Now Munch is not bad, but their right tackle is. Mm, but worse is that deal. Worse is worse is a guy. And again, when they won the Super Bowl a couple years ago with Tom Brady, their O line was probably one of the best O lines in the league, and they is cr- quickly falling off. Let's go to the dark side for for the Buccaneers. Uh, they're transitioning to three four, so now they're going to have two stand up guys and then two guys in the middle, uh, three guys in the middle. I'm sorry. On the edge, they're going to have Yaya Digby played 17 games, 38 tackles, seven and a half sacks, and eight QB hits. And then Joe Tryon Sharinka, 17 games, five sacks, and seven QB hits. Uh, in the middle, they got um, Vita Vea, who's a, a stalwart, uh, eight, and a half, eight tackles for loss, five and a half sacks. And he's a guy that's really, really hard to move. Uh, Cansey, which should be his second year from Pittsburgh, who I thought was undersized, but really plays well in the middle. And also Logan Hall, who had a half a sack and one QB hit. So I have their D-line edge group ranked 27, mainly because of BSV Vita and a bunch of average guys. Tryon is okay. Um, Cansey can improve on his rookie year, but it's Vita Vea and a bunch of other guys. Is you know If you can kind of block Vita Vea, you can move the ball on. Let's go to their linebacker room. Linebacker room number 27. When they won the Super Bowl years ago, their linebacker room was top tier. It was Levante David. It was, uh, I forgot the other guy's, guy's name, but those two guys were studs. David's a little older and kind of fell off, and now he don't have his running mate anymore. So it's Levante David now and K.J. Britt. Levante David played 15 games, still had 134 tackles, four and a half sacks, uh, five passes defended. Uh, his running mate now is K.J. Britt. He had 16 games, 29 tackles, one TFL, one one pass defended. I got them as a 27th rank linebacker room. Now, Levante David can still play, even though he's a lot older in age, but the linebacker crew just ain't what it used to be. It's just not what it used to be. And again, if you can move Vita, Vita Vea, that hurts Levante David, and they just not what they used to be. Uh, but their, their back end is pretty strong. I have them as the seventh best cornerback room. You have Jameer Dean played 13 games with 61 tackles, a 68.9% um, catch rate, four PBUs, four penalties. Also in the secondary, Zion McCullough, 17 games, 68 tackles, 56% uh, catch rate, eight PBUs, three penalties. And the nickel guy is Christian Eisen, 17 games, 65 tackles, 79% catch rate, zero PBUs, and six penalties. But Jamal Dean and McCullough, those guys, they play a lot of man. Play a lot of man, and they, they do a good job of let not letting guys get off the ball. So you don't see a lot of PBUs. You don't see a lot of of balls being even being thrown their way because they do a they get rid of the guys before they even get into their routes. Especially Dean. Dean Dean is 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 really good at just eliminating receivers before they even get an opportunity to run routes. And so for that, you know, and he's teaching McCullough. And I do it, and Eisen is the nickel guy. He'll do a better job of it this year, especially under the toolage of Dean, uh, of getting better at it this year. In their safety room, I have them number four, number four in the NFL in safety room. Anton Wingfield Jr., one of the best safeties in the game. 17 games, 122 tackles, six TFLs, six sacks, six forced fumbles, a 70.3 uh, catch rate, seven PBUs, no penalties. He was all pro first team. Anton Wingfield Jr. You add in Jordan Whitehead from the Jets. Came in from the Jets. He had 17 games. He had 97 tackles, three TFLs, a half a sack, a 62.5% catch rate, four PBUs, and one penalty. That's a formidable safety room right there. So you got the number seven cornerback room, the number four safety room. On the back end, they're pretty good. So if they can get their front end to, to do anything, they should be pretty good on the defensive side of the ball. So let's run back all of their position groups and kind of see what it evens out to be. So the quarterback room, they're number 20. Running back room, 28. Wide receiver, 13. Tight end, 28. O-line, 19. D-line edge group, 27. Linebacker group, 27. Cornerback room, 7. And safety group, 4. 
when you average it all out and divide it, it's 19.22222. And that makes them number 25 on the more Sifty Tyler Power Rankings. Let's take a look at their draft picks and see how they fit into this fold real quick. Let me get back to it. One second. Next season. Team draftees. So you're looking at Graham Barton, who's probably going to start at center. Chris Braswell, who may crack that linebacker room, because I just talked about how weak the linebacker room is. Uh, Tyke Smith, a DB from Georgia. Jalen McMillan, who may get into that slot receiver fold some. Bucky Irvin, who's going to be in the rotation at, at running back. Um, Elijah Klein as a guard from Texas, from UTEP. And then David Cook, a tight end from Washington, who may get in that fold also. So this is your number 25 team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who finished first in the NFC South last year and also had a playoff victory to go along with it. Baker Mayfield surprised some folks. So you tell me who you guys think is going to be the number 24 team. This is Coach Evans with more Sip the Tally. I'll see you guys in the next one. I uh, appreciate you guys coming through. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Peace.